or I guess we're not quite done with uh, these yet. Uh, I saw a few comments along the lines of maybe the C5 CU vapor chamber works better with higher wattage CPUs. So let's talk real quick about that. Welcome to Machines More. So this will just be a quick follow-up to the review that went live yesterday for the C5 CU uh, from Cryorig. It's a plausible observation. The heat sinks do have to be optimized for a range of wattages. So if it is actually better with hotter CPUs, then I do wanna account for that possibility. Um, you might recall that 14600K that I tested. Well, that one can in fact draw down well in excess of 160 watts if you give it enough cooling. It just throttled itself back very significantly, but I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. So for completeness, I did what any sensible SFF enthusiast would do, and that is put a 9950X under it. How did it work? Well, I let the fan go as fast as it wanted, which was 100%, and as expected, it hit the TJ Max or max temp of 95 degrees almost right away and started to reduce power to just over 130 watts. So high TDP rating or not, don't expect the CPU to want to push more than that. For a direct comparison, I set the max power at 130 watts and here the noise normalized comparison against the thermal right uh, full copper cooler still shows that the AXP90 full copper is better than the C5CU at this uh, higher power level. So TJ Maxx with the fans uh, at this reduced level, the CPU dials back power further to 123 watts. If you let the fan go up to 100%, which is way louder, then we do see that the temps get slightly better and it can go the full 130 watts that I set. Uh, the heatsink actually does respond a bit differently at this power level since with the 7800X 3D, when I bumped up fan speeds past this 80% or so noise normalized point, I wasn't seeing any improvement with the 7800X 3D. So in terms of the heatsink, potentially being optimized for a higher power level it's definitely possible uh, therefore in one respect at the higher power level on am5 the c5cu shows that it has a little bit more overhead than the thermorite if you don't care about sound levels at all does that make it suitable for a high tdp chip like this no absolutely not uh, the, the chip idles at 80 plus degrees with very audible fan speeds and even with undervolting and uh, let's say you hit the silicon lottery of a lifetime, you're still not gonna get a good experience or get the most out of a powerful CPU like this. And I'd argue uh, both of these little coolers are just not really appropriate here. Think of it this way, even if the vapor chamber heatsink is optimized for this level and capable of transferring that much heat to the heat fins, then you're still subject to what the form factor can handle with a single 92 millimeter fan, right? And if that sounds like a good idea, then I got 120 millimeter AIO to sell you, right? Uh, some of you mentioned 9800X3D. That can draw down much more than 130 watts for heavy all-core use. Uh, if you only intend on gaming usage, it's still in that 80 to 90 watt range. Either way, the material findings for that and uh, some of our higher TDB CPUs here is still similar to what I concluded on before. Because even if you can do some undervolting or power limiting your CPU, a good conventional heatsink like the thermal right here still performs very well. And at a minimum, it doesn't appear to lose out here. And given the cost factor, assuming that you know there's a higher market price uh, for these C5 series coolers, it's just really hard to justify in that I don't see you objectively gaining uh, anything over the conventional heatsink. So as mentioned, I, I think this design plus a few heat pipes could potentially bring a small improvement, just like you know we're seeing with 5080 and 5090 GPU heatsinks, of course. You still need to have enough fan to make that work right and we're limited here to 92 millimeters so if that addressed your questions give a like uh, subscribe all that good stuff and big thanks for watching